So, before we go ahead with our discussion on various topics of psychology, the obvious question that would come to our mind is why psychology? Why should one study this subject? Well, couple of reasons. The very first one that it helps us understand oneself as well as the others. Now, we all know that there are you know, large number of dimensions of human behavior. Now, how to position yourself in a given life circumstances? So, when you want to uh, position yourself according to the life situation that you are experiencing, when you have to understand others in the type of scenario you are in, psychology can be instrumental. In case you are having certain adverse experiences, psychology can help you cope better. Furthermore, it helps us understand and accept behavioral aberrations and all types of anomalies that one can think of. So, usually if you look at human behavior in any given situation, you would find that you know, there could be a wide spectrum of possible responses. Some what psychologists call as direct overt attack, you have a situation at hand, you plan a strategy, you execute it you have finally overcome the problem, that is the direct overt attack. There could be some substitute reaction. Okay. So, you are not directly attacking the situation, but you opt for certain type of behavioral response, which substitutes for a given action. There could be a third possibility, where you go ahead with certain defenses, and these are borderline defenses which would mean primarily that you are able to defend yourself okay, without a feeling of shame or guilt. And at the same time, your behavior also is socially acceptable, that is the borderline defensive reactions. And then comes the socially unacceptable overt reactions, steps that you take, but then they overcome, they go beyond what is called as the line of social acceptance. Direct overt attack and substitute reactions, they are considered as complete healthy response, whereas borderline defense reactions and unacceptable social reactions, they come under the gray zone, the borderline zone, means little more intense response or repetition of similar pattern of behavior and then perhaps clinicians will start considering that your behavior is aberrated. And then of course, the clinical aspect of the behavior where the reactions are either called as psychosomatic responses, they are called as neurotic responses or it could the symptoms could be grave enough to be considered as psychotic response. So, when we consider that I I am looking at a set of human beings and whole dynamics of responses in a given type of a situation, then the better clarity I have, the better understanding I have of the possible aberrations or even in the normal zone, the full broad spectrum of possible human reactions, okay, psychology can help us do this job much better. So, even if you come across people uh, know who would come forward with aberrated responses, you would have greater acceptance, greater understanding, greater tolerance for that. Okay. And similarly, if you understand psychological disorders better, perhaps it makes life simpler for you as well as the person who suffers from it. Another important task that psychology provides you is to understand relationships. So, Frankly speaking, this subject does not necessarily make you psychologically healthier, but of course, this knowledge is likely to positively affect your interpersonal relationship, both at work front as well as the family front. Third and important aspect that once you understand this very subject, the nitty gritties, it sharpens your analytical ability. With this sharpened uh, analytical skill, what would happen? You would you know, go ahead with more and more scientifically accepted method in understanding others. Because of your training in analytical thinking and scientific methods, you would be you know, very conveniently making 
by and large a line of distinction you will be able to draw between common sense and what is called as a replicable type of uh, uh, reference that you are drawing. Many things are commonsensical and you could you know, commit a big blunder when you consider that to be a scientific of type of an observation. So, once you have developed, you have sharpened your analytical ability okay, and you have understood the methods that have uh, that scientific flavor used by psychologists and uh, used by and large in the behavioral research, you would very easily be able to consider that fine although this appears and commonsensically this is what one can uh, deduce you yourself would not like to go ahead with that deduction. The reason being that you still you doubt that this is more and more of a commonsensical thing rather than being more and more scientifically sound observation. Much later when we come to methods of psychology, they, there even we will be talking about observation as a method. Okay. So, what is it that you know uh, in even in something as simple as observation can make uh, the whole outcome more scientific or the outcome could basically be only commonsensical type of observation which might have certain errors. So, at least understanding of this subject will help you draw that line much and much clearer. Another important aspect is that with the understanding of this very subject, you could be extremely effective at your workplace. The reason being that you have the knowledge of human behavior and this in turn will facilitate understanding of the human dynamics at workplace. So, why someone is doing what he or she is doing, why people think the way they think, uh, why certain type of uh, know, acceptance, rejection, okay, certain types of gossip, certain type of rumors, certain type of preconceived notions, okay, uh, why some people are you know, uh, tourist taking and some are not. All those you know, dynamics of human behavior you would be very easily able to decipher and this in turn will make you extremely effective at your workplace. Psychology of course, touches every aspect of our life. Factors that influences our life, largely it could be personal in nature, it could be societal in nature, it could be even cultural factors that impact our behavior. You would be very uh, conveniently able to understand okay, what are the factors that influences behavior and therefore, you would be able to understand why you are doing what you are doing or why others are doing what they are doing. Understanding of psychology can of course, help you in uh, know, betterment of your communication ability, especially in terms of expressing your emotions uh, in a more balanced way, proper usage of language and your verbal expression which would be you know, nicely complemented with your body language. Overall, you would have a greater appreciation for human life in all forms and at all stages, infants, adolescents, adults. Uh, senior citizens okay. and in all variations. No? Right now, when I was referring to direct overt attack to uh, psychotic pattern of behavior, uh, wherever you fall on the spectrum, you would have a great appreciation for life. And of course, the understanding of psychology can be complemented okay, by your understanding of other subjects and at the same time, your understanding of psychology can also complement your understanding of related subjects. So, this is the reason why we should all study psychology and perhaps I am able to communicate to you that why psychology is essential for you and thank you for taking this course. We will go ahead with understanding the other aspects. Having understood why psychology, the obvious question that would come to your mind is that uh, what are you know, the different areas or say what is the worth of the subject? what are the topics that are uh, taken into account if I go ahead with subject like psychology. Well, I have two things to offer to you for your uh, understanding. One, I would uh, know just like to share with you the various divisions of uh, the American Psychological Association, okay, large number of them and I will try to explain what actually these areas cover and I have heavily borrowed from uh, you know the details given on the website of uh, the American Psychological Association. But I thought this is essential because this will help you understand that what are the different domains in which psychologists have tried to venture. And then I would uh, come across the some of the dominant areas 
and some of the areas where still no research is taking place and it is yet to establish itself in a much better way. So, well, the first division of American Psychological Association, what is called as general psychology and basically it has diverse specialities, uh, which incorporates multiple perspectives from various sub disciplines of psychology. The second division that talks about teaching of psychology uh, handles uh, teaching and learning of the subject, providing resources and services and collaborative community for professional development. The third division that is the experimental psychology division, uh, which is basically a society for experimental psychology and cognitive science and it does you know uh, take care of the development of experimental psychology uh, as a science. The fifth division that uh, you know, takes care of the quantitative and the qualitative method uh, basically focuses on evaluation, measurement and statistics. Uh, later on when we come to the details, you would realize you know, that uh, uh, approximately every ability that you can think of uh, being present in human beings, psychologists have tried to quantify them. So, once you quantify, if you convert a trait, if you convert a behavioral outcome into uh, some uh, numbers, then of course, you need the statistics for analysis. And similarly, there could be uh, you know, ways and means of uh, you know, extracting qualitative data, say for instance, uh, talking to somebody, collecting the narratives, analyzing the narratives. So, both quantitative and qualitative methods uh, are adopted by this very subject and uh, say program evaluation, measurement, statistics, assessment and uh, various types of qualitative methods. The sixth division of uh, American Psychological Association basically you know, handles the behavioral neuroscience and comparative psychology. Uh, comparative psychology of course, you know, where uh, uh, you look at the behavior of humans and other animals searching for similarities and differences between them and basically you try to you know, look at things from evolutionary and developmental perspective. Whereas, behavioral neuroscience you know, uh, tries to look at the biology of the behavior and behavior and its relationship with perception, learning, memory, cognition, mem uh, motivation and emotion, the common topics of psychology, these are taken into account. Brain and its relation to behavior, its evolution, its function, uh, abnormalities of the brain, how uh, the uh, neural plasticity works, how in the case uh, after brain damage, how the brain uh, you know, repairs itself, issues like that are taken care in uh, this very branch. Brain behavior interaction and the interaction with the immune system, cardiovascular system and energy regulation systems, no, these are you know, the broad domains taken care in this division. Seventh division uh, that handles developmental psychology uh, basically looks at the application of scientific knowledge to educational, child care, uh, policy and related settings. The eighth division, uh, you know, which is personality and social psychology division, uh, looks at the basic and applied research and practice in the field of personality and social psychology. And it does take care of the social and the physical environment and the human response in such type of environment. The ninth division, which is the Society for Psychological Study of Social Issues. Uh, this basically is an area where psychologists and allied social scientists, they share common concern on psychological aspect of various social issues, uh, say uh, human problems of the group, community, nation and problems okay, that have no national boundaries are also taken care uh, in this division. Psychology and the art which is more and more interdisciplinary in nature and it, and it encompasses visual arts, poetry, literature, music, uh, dance. So, basically you look at the creative and the art part. So, creativity which would include the developmental, motivational, affective and the cognitive processes, whereas the art part which would be including aesthetics, content, form and function, how audience responds to such type of arts in terms of their preferences, in terms of the judgment of those uh, artistic outcomes, this is what psychology and the art does. The twelfth division, the most uh, commonly known division, the clinical psychology division. Basically, it handles the science of clinical psychology. Uh, it also focuses on the assessment of the individual. Clinical geo psychology and is an another uh, you know, specific uh, concern that this group focuses on. 
uh, women and ethnic minorities are of course, other special groups. The 13th division is the consulting psychology division, uh, which basically uh, looks at the consultative processes including applied activities, research and evaluation and education and training. Uh, consultation skill, theory and knowledge development that is taken care by this very division. The 14th division again one of the most commonly known in the area of psychology is the industrial and organizational psychology division which looks at the application of psychology to all types of organizations and work settings. It could be manufacturing, commercial enterprise, labor unions, public agencies. In all such situations, how human dynamics work, testing or assessment, leadership, team management, workplace safety and uh, balance between the work life uh, situation as well as looking at diversity and how one uh, adjusts in those type of diverse situations. Uh, it's something that uh, you know, psychologists working in this area engage themselves in. The 15th division is the educational psychology division, which looks at the research, teaching or practice in educational settings, applications to broad spectrum of uh, teaching, training and learning issues, uh, they have related themselves uh, with this. The 16th division is the school psychology division, uh, which basically looks at delivery of comprehensive psychological services to children, adolescents and families in schools and other applied settings. The 17th division is the counseling psychology division, again one of the most popular ones, uh, which engages into education and training, scientific investigation, practice and diversity. They also do take care of public interest in professional psychology. The 18th division that is psychologist in public service, uh, this looks at the needs of the public in areas such as psychological practice, research, training and policy formation, community and state psychologist, criminal justice, police and public safety uh, as well as psychologist in the veteran affairs. So, these are uh, the things where uh, they engage themselves into. The 19th division that is uh, the division of uh, military psychology looks at application of psychological research to uh, problems related to armed forces. Then comes the 20th division that is adult development and aging, uh, which basically concerns themselves to psychological development and changes throughout the adult years. The 21st division is the applied experimental and engineering psychologist. They primarily look at psychological principles, knowledge and research to improve technology, consumer products, energy systems, communication and information, transportation, the decision making process, work setting and living environment. So, safer and more effective and more reliable systems through improved understanding of users requirement is something that applied experimental psychologists and engineering psychologists concentrate on. The 22nd division uh, that looks at uh, the rehabilitation psychology. Uh, this division basically looks at the psychological aspect of disability and rehabilitation. 23rd division uh, is that of the consumer psychology, which looks at consumer psychology and public welfare. The 24th division is the theoretical and philosophical psychology, uh, which basically looks at the psychological theories and issues in both their scientific and philosophical dimensions and it tries to uh, find out the interrelationship among them. The 25th division is the experimental analysis of behavior, which looks at experimental analysis of animal and human behavior and application of the results of such uh, you know, understanding of animal human uh, behavior, how it can be extended to human affairs. So, that is what experimental analysis of behavior they do. The 26th division is the history of psychology division. Uh, it basically looks at the awareness and appreciation of the history of psychology, understanding contemporary psychology, the relationship of psychology to other scientific fields and its role in the society. The 27th division is that of the community psychology, which looks at the reciprocal relationship between individual and social systems, which constitute the community context. The 28th division is the psychopharmacology and substance abuse and as the name suggests, it basically engages into dissemination of information regarding the effects of drug on behavior, behavioral effect of psychoactive or central nervous system medicine, drugs and chemicals, interaction of behavior, drugs and other environmental factors in animals and human beings, 
Uh, the animal research side of it also looks at the neurobehavioral toxicology and psychopharmacology. And importantly, the treatment of drug addiction and public policy related to medication regulation as well as substance abuse is something that this division looks at. 29 division is the psychotherapy division and psychotherapy division uh, basically looks at preserving and expanding uh, psychotherapy, advancement of evidence based for psychotherapy and psychotherapeutic relationships. The 30th division is the psychological hypnosis division which looks at mind body connection, dissociation, but primarily it looks at the advancement of application of hypnosis in behavioral medicine as well as professional and public education. 31st division basically has to do with the state psychological association affairs, so we are not going into the details of it. The 32nd division is the humanistic psychology division, which looks at full richness of human experience, philosophical humanism, existentialism and phenomenology, uh, psychotherapy, education, management, social responsibility and change. These are the concerns of humanistic psychologists. 33rd division is that of the intellectual and developmental disability and autism spectrum disorders. And once again as the name suggests, they are concerned or they have confined themselves to the practice in the treatment of intellectual and developmental disabilities. They look at behavior modification and technology, dual diagnosis, early intervention, aging and adult development and transition into adulthood is something uh, that they focus on. 34th division which is the environmental population and conservation psychology. They look at the interaction between humans and other natural and built environment, human behavior and well-being related to design of built space, landscape and natural environment, conservation of wildlife and other species, synergy between human mental health and the ecology of the natural environment as well as the psychological consequences of high population density. So, these are the concerns of environmental population and conservation psychologists. 35th division which is the psychology of women division, uh, they look at the organizational base for all feminist women and men interested in the psychology of women. 36th division which is the psychology of religion and spirituality, they look at the interpretive frameworks to diverse forms of religion and spirituality. And they basically focus on the dialogue and interchange between psychological and religious perspectives and institutions. 37th division is child and family policy and practice. They basically look at the services and service structure for children and youth, psychological knowledge to other fields such as anthropology, law and pediatrics in such areas as employment, education, recreation and family planning is taken uh, care of them. They also focus on critical needs of ethnic minorities, children's media, effectiveness of child maltreatment prevention program and treatment of violent juvenile offenders. 38th division which is health psychology division, a very popularly talked about nowadays. Uh, this area basically looks at the health and illness through basic and clinical research, integration of biomedical information about health and illness with current psychological knowledge and the special interest groups. Uh, confine themselves to aging, women and minority health issues. 39th division is psychoanalysis, which is basically study, practice and development of psychoanalysis and psychoanalytic psychotherapy. The 40th division is clinical neuropsychology division, which basically looks at the relationship between brain and human behavior. They do look at psychological, cognitive, physiological, developmental, clinical, rehabilitation, school, forensic and health aspect of psychology. The 41st division is the American Psychology Law Society, which basically focuses on the understanding of law and legal institutions and application of psychology in the legal system. The 42nd division is psychologist in independent practice. They are the ones who confine themselves to tools and learning opportunities. Uh, to increase professional skills building and practice development across the career span. Couple and family psychology is the 43rd division which focuses on family and couples. The 44th division is the psychological study of uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender issues and they primarily focus on the whole range of human sexual orientation 
professional standards, public policy, uh, youth, family, ethnic, racial issues and as well as science uh, behind the whole human sexual orientation is that the 44th division looks at. 45th division which is psychological study of culture, ethnicity and race. They look at the application of psychological knowledge to ethnic minority issues as well as public welfare. Media psychology and technology is the 46th division which looks at media communication and technology, impact of the media on human behavior and development of media literacy essential to the public and profession. 47th division is that of sports exercise and performance psychology uh, where the experts they work in the area of exercise and sports. 48th division which is the peace, conflict and violence, they focus on peace, non-violent conflict resolution, reconciliation and causes, consequences and prevention of violence as well as destructive conflict. The 49th division uh, is that of group psychology and group psychotherapy and they focus on these two issues. The 50th division is the addiction psychology division which basically looks at addictive behavior including problematic usage of alcohol, nicotine and other drugs. Uh, disorders which involves gambling, eating, sexual behavior or spending is also you know, uh, taken care by psychologists who work in this very area. The 51st division is of psychological study of men and masculinity and they look at the critical issues facing men. The 52nd division is the international psychology division which basically works towards development of contextually informed and culturally inclusive psychological science and practice and serving public interest and promotion of the global perspective. The 53rd division is that of uh, clinical child and adolescent psychology which looks at mental health of children, youth and families. The 54th division is the pediatric psychology division which looks at the principles of psychology and its application within the context of pediatric health, health and development of children, adolescents and their families through use of evidence based methods. The 55th division is the division that uh, takes care of the advancement of uh, pharmacotherapy and this very division basically looks at the psychological treatment combined with psychopharmacological medications. And the last division that is the 56th division is the trauma psychology division which looks at professional and public education related to traumatic stress. And if you look at all the divisions no, that we have focused on here, all the divisions of American Psychological Association, it tells you how wide the uh, expansion of the understanding of psychology is. And therefore, whatever you can think of uh, you know, related to human beings, you would realize uh, that one or the other branch of psychology handles that. So, having understood uh, why study of psychology, having looked at various divisions of uh, American Psychological Association, uh, if you now have to understand uh, know what are the fields uh, where psychologists indulge themselves into, you have seen the full range now. I will quickly summarize them. So, general psychology basically looks at the basic characteristics of behavior and it searches for the general and the basic process and the laws that govern them. Uh, the neuropsychological aspect which looks at the brain, nervous system, endocrine glands and tries to correlate physiology with behavior. Whereas, comparative psychology uh, which basically relates animal and human behavior and try to get a comparative picture. One of uh, the what you call well developed and uh, very much used uh, discipline in psychology is that of the educational psychology division, where you realize that psychological principles are uh, used in the educational settings. Uh, they basically look at studying and improving teaching and the learning process. Um, and uh, the whole uh, uh, Bachelor of Education program, uh, the B. Ed. program, the M. Ed. program, you know, they heavily borrow uh, content from psychology. Developmental psychology we have talked about, cognitive psychology, organizational, abnormal and clinical aspect of psychology. Military psychology, we just said that why in this division uh, you know, looks at the needs of the armed forces which basically means you know, that you look at a specific aspect of the defense services, uh, which would include selection of their personnel, 
uh, designing uh, training programs for them, uh, development of the officers like quality which is one of the mandate of uh, these services and the most Herculean task is maintenance of morale both within and outside the forces. Health psychology and community psychology we have discussed, environmental psychology we discussed. Uh, two interesting aspects, one is the correctional psychology where you realize that people work towards understanding and changing behavior uh, which has to do with you know, violation of law and order. And one area of psychology which is uh, of course uh, not so developed in our country is the aerospace psychology which looks at the physiological and the psychological changes that take place uh, when one is in the space, spacecraft or at high altitude. Uh, sports psychology is one of the emerging fields uh, which uh, looks at uh, issues like motivation, high risk sports uh, etcetera and again one of the not so developed area uh, of psychology as far as our country is concerned is political psychology which looks at issues and problems related to people and their relationship with the authority which is generally political in nature. So, this is the full spectrum and the intention of you uh, know uh, making you go through the division of psychology as well as the emerging fields was to realize that uh, what is the importance of the subject that you have opted to go through in this very MOOCs program. So, when we meet next we would be talking about various schools of thoughts in psychology, then we would be uh, you know, talking about major milestones, then we will go to methods. And with this we will be basically completing our overall understanding of what psychology is, the dominant methods and the fields. And thereafter we will start uh, from the second week, we will start going through uh, specific modules where we would be talking about perception, learning, memory, emotion, genetics and behavior and so forth. And when we will come to the last week of this very course, that would be the time when we would be basically looking at some of the uh, methods, their application used in the lab setup to understand theoretically what we, we would have discussed in the first 7 weeks. So, see you in the next lecture.